Welcome back to Football HQ with Coach K. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Uh, just here to talk a little bit of football, especially offense, and usually about the passing game, and that's what we'll talk about today. I want to talk about a concept that is great for 7-on-7 seven seven, um, and also 11-on-11 11 11 as well. And I want to make a note that I see a lot of guys asking for 7-on-7 seven seven plays um, just in different you know, groups online, and there really should not be any 7-on-7 seven seven plays. You should have your regular passing game. And yeah, there are some things that will work better on 7-on-7, seven seven, but you shouldn't be running things that are not in your offense. Um, that's, there's no point in that, in my opinion. Um, so that being said, this is um, the levels concept is a great seven on seven play, and I'll explain why. But it's something that you, sh that you should have in your um, in your passing attack as well in your arsenal. So let's go to that right now. The levels concept. Okay, the levels concept, here it is out of a two-by-two two set. It is the one on the right. It is just an in-breaking route at one level following an in-breaking route at a higher level. Um, I, I have a kind of a squiggly line here. It's not usually drawn that way, but I want an inside release um, from my inside receiver on the invert or outside linebacker. We're trying to hit this square in right here. I call it a five-yard square in. We're trying to hit this square in. This is our number one looking at our progression. This is where we want the ball to go. And this is why it's a great seven on seven play. You know, you have, you know, you, you have a goal line situation. You can't hand it off and run it in. You can't line up in a jumbo set. So this is a slant or this is a great throw to make in seven on seven. It's a great throw to make on third and two at the 45 yard line in a real game as well, or on the goal line. I like this anywhere, but basically the, it's pretty, pretty simple to look at. It's a, if you have a progression, it's just one to two low to high. Your eyes are on the flat defender or the outside linebacker. We assume that this corner cannot take this route away. We need to get a great release from our Z. We need to get him into a back pedal and then quickly square it off, put our foot down on the ground, and the quarterback's gonna throw it. I told him to throw it to the near it to the to the field side number, um, kind of on the shoulder pad, just right here, to where the defender's gonna have to come through him and get pass interference to break this up. Um, but that's going to happen if, if, if he walls to the inside or if he drops with this route. If, however, he goes ahead and just goes right to the flats immediately, then we're looking for the square in. Again, we're going to assume that our number two receiver, the Y, is going to get a back pedal out of the safety, and, he, and he's going to find, we'll find an opening in the window between the linebackers. And this play, I have the snag concept on the other side. You can pair this with any concept you want at a two by two. Um, I wouldn't do it with um, some kind of crossing route, but anything a half field concept. Um, here I have snag. So, you know, if, for example, the strong safety was kind of was, was down a little bit, um, you know, they're, or maybe they're, you know, they're giving me some kind of look you don't like, you have another side to look at here. Um, but for the most part, if, if we call the levels concept, uh, my quarterback knows he's looking to that side, looking for the square in first and the 10 yard dig behind it. Um, you, you, can, you know, you can tell him to run it between four and six and nine and 11, however you like. But that's a great look at doubles. Um, it's a great look at doubles levels. Now, I don't run it out of trips much, but you definitely could. All right, now it becomes kind of a, a, um, a full field concept. Um, it's usually done with two underneath routes and one dig over the top of that. Um, but you can mix and match. You can have different players run the 10 yard dig. I like it this way to where really it's just, we're throwing one of these two square ends based off of the linebacker. Um, if he walls but allows um, the, our receiver, number two receiver to come in, then we're throwing that. And then if he, if, he, if, he, if he works with this route, then we're throwing behind it. I like to look one to two right here and then come back, which I don't usually like to try to have the quarterback's eyes go back and forth. But here, most of the time, we're throwing one of these two routes. Again, you have, now if you get a backer over here and you have two overhangs, um, something like that, then you can work again your, what I have left of the snag route over here. But most of the time, Again, we're trying to throw a square in, it's third down, um, or we're just getting some we're really soft cover four look. We're going underneath that. Um, again, great for seven on seven for short yardage plays. Um, 
if you have a different way that you've run it, let me know. I'd love to hear it. I know some teams do them from both sides. Now, I haven't really done well with that, but if that's the way that you run the levels concept, let me know in the comments below. Also, um, don't forget, you know, I have the playbooks. If you've been on here, you know, I, I like to watch college games from some great offenses. I've got um, Baylor 2014, Oklahoma 2018, and working on more. Um, those are down below as well. You can email me about those. So subscribe if you haven't. Come back soon, and we're glad that you uh, came here for levels.